We're going to be working with typography in this section of the course. This is a really exciting um, part of design because typography is such a powerful tool to use in your design and it can make such an impact. So type is something that, that every single person is familiar with. Every single person interacts with, they get information with, and they basically spend a good part of their day with type. You see it in magazines, billboards, product packages, t-shirts, you see it on your computer, your television, when you read a book. Just think about how much interaction you have with type every single day. There isn't much that you do without type in some form or another. Type is important for these reasons, and knowing how to use type effectively is an extremely powerful tool. Studies have shown that people are reading less and less. This in turn makes type even more powerful and more important. An increased awareness of typography is increased power and strength of printed words. How words are presented has become more important and more of a focus. These choices are not arbitrary. They should not be left to a whim. What you say is affected by how you say it. Type gives your message a voice. It gives it character and importance. Type is an art, but an art with a clear purpose. The purpose is communication. In this section of the course, we'll be looking at how, to, how your type choices can help you to, to make you a better communicator. The word typography comes from a Greek word, two Greek words actually, meaning to strike and to write. And if you think about it, that's kind of where type came from. It's written word that was created by striking something, striking a block or metal plate or even on your typewriter. Um, so that's just kind of the history of the word. Our written language has been a powerful agent of change for the cultures of human civilizations for thousands of years political, social, academic, artistic, musical, scientific, religious, and technological forces have guided and transformed by written language. Just as written language has evolved out of the scope of these human experiences and institutions. Throughout history, the development of technological advancements has been instrumental in the progression of typography as a tool and as a design form. New technologies have always inspired designers to explore new capabilities and to challenge the boundaries of existing visual language structures. This is in order to express their unique experiences and differentiate themselves from their predecessors. Typography has traditionally been defined as the study, the use, and design of sets of identical repeated letter forms. Though typography evolved from one-of-a-kind written hand, handwritten scripts, the development of printing technologies has drastically changed the nature of written communication, and the term typography that was, uh, th and the term that was used to describe it, which is typography. Whether typefaces look formal or informal, geometric or organic, messy or clean, their typographic quality has been based on reproducibility. However, even this definition has been challenged with recent digital typographic innovations. And these are pushing the boundaries of type use and design. Let's take a quick look at the history of type. And this is just going to be a brief history of type because it's a little more involved than what we're going to be able to cover here. But I just want to give you a background. If you begin to explore the history of type, you need to examine human kinds earliest remaining communicative marks, which are cave art or petroglyphs. These were left behind over 10,000 years ago by early humans who used what they had available to record their experiences. They mixed natural pigments with animal fat to make paints or they carved images into stone. Prehistoric people made markings ranging from representative images to abstract symbols. If we go back to 3000 BC, the Egyptian hieroglyphics, they started off as pictograms before 3000 BC, and eventually they evolved into a complex combination of pictographs, ideograms, and phonograms, which basically reigned for the next 3000 years or so. It's a pretty sophisticated form of written communication. In about 1800, BC, the, uh, back in ancient China, people were also developing written language and technologies to support their use. Chinese legend tells us that around the year of about 1800 BC, a man was inspired by the footprints and claw marks of animals and birds, and he developed his own written marks based on this, and the result was basically Chinese calligraphy. 
around 1500 BC, the Phoenician um, alphabet was came to be, and the Phoenician people were they used an abstract kind of phonogram based alphabet of 22 characters and this became since Phoenicia was such an important center of trade the Phoenician language was dispersed to various lands by merchants and other travelers and that's how the language kind of spread um, around a thousand BC the Greeks adopted the Phoenician alphabet and over time they adapted it into Greek by changing some consonants and adding vowels to it at around 100 BC, the, the Romans invaded Greece, and among the riches taken by the Romans were the contents of the entire Grecian libraries. This Greek influence on Roman culture was substantial because the Greek cultural artifacts taken by the Romans were studied, they were adapted, and dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. The Latin alphabet that we use today was used by the Romans, but it is believed to have been grown out of a combination of Greek, Semitic, and Southern Italian influences. It's kind of interesting. At about 105 CE, the invention of paper was reported. It basically, uh, in China, they are reported to having invented paper for the empire, and they used to soak rags in bark and beat them into a pulp, and then they would spread the fibers on a mold and press them flat and peel the resulting sheets of paper from the mold and hang and hung them up to dry. And this paper. Um, is the formula that people you know continued to use for thousands of years afterwards to produce paper. At about 200 CE um, the the Greeks were writing on papyrus and parchment and metal, leather, wood, wax, clay tablets, basically whatever they could get their hands on, and they used pens made from reeds with little metal nibs attached to the ends that would help to regulate the flow of ink. Around the, the seventh century, people started using goose quills as pens with the hollow end split, and it was shaped to act as a nib for more precision. And then in the twelfth century, people started cutting the quill pens at a greater angle, and later pen nibs of, of different writh widths and shapes were introduced as attachments to quill pens. Every change in the pen's technology drastically altered the shape of the pen's strokes, and it therefore affected the evolution of handwritten scripts. It's kind of interesting. In about 700 CE, the, uh, the Chinese developed a woodblock um, a woodblock print process, and it's actually still used today, but basically raised images and calligraphy were cut into wooden slabs, which were then inked, and the printer would transfer the ink to paper by placing a piece of paper on the raised inked surface and rubbing the back. And it's pretty impressive because back in the day, a fast printer could pull about 200 prints of design in one hour. Um, that's pretty amazing that they could get that much out of this kind of relief printing, which was, you know, a process of, of the ink sitting on this raised surface and then being transferred to the paper. Um, in about, or at about, the, in the 1300s, the woodblock printing technology had made its way from China to Europe by way of travelers. Um, these were mostly merchants and soldiers. and within a hundred years the the tourism had become such a driving factor that it spread the woodblock printing throughout Europe printers saw that it was profitable to produce souvenir devotional prints for tourists who were visiting shrines and playing cards for the general population so the block printing industry really flourished during this time um, during the mid 1400s printers in Europe started using the woodblock printing process to print whole books of 30 to 50 pages and finally in the you know 1400s um, Johannes Gutenberg of Germany he was basically credited for inventing the metal movable type printing process and typography you know before this was handwritten or done in the the wood block um, printing method but basically you know the the typography that was first used by Gutenberg he used this gothic typefaces and it was pretty incredible because he basically worked on this 
printing press for about two decades and finally was able to um, you know get it to a point where you could use interchangeable reusable letters and he had invented appropriate inks for this specific process and he did such a good job that this method of printing it really only changed very very slightly and there was only slight modifications and improvements on his press and that technology was used in printing for the next 400 years or so so it it's pretty incredible that this you know metal movable type in Europe went ahead and made it much easier for for typographers to create and set type um, so that really helped to explode the ability to create printed materials, printed books, and it gave the middle class a greater opportunity to obtain books that were not previously offered to them. Um, this movable type also gave writers a great chance of distributing the, their work to more and more people. And this is at the point where the you know use of type really flourished and became kind of what it is you know today, basically. If we kind of look at the use of type in more, more modern times and contemporary use, the practice and the study of typography, it's, it's really broad. It basically covers all aspects of letter design and application. Um, this includes typesetting and typeface design, handwriting and calligraphy, graffiti, inscriptional and architectural lettering, poster design and other large-scale lettering like signages and billboards, um, business communications and promotional collateral, advertising, um, typographic logos, um, kinetic typography that is used in motion pictures and televisions. Um, since the digitization, the digitization, the digit, digitizing, um, the range of type, the applications have become way more eclectic and more um, you know, more appealing to mass use. You can see that type appears on clothing, on web pages. It's a component of industrial design. It resides on household appliances. Um, we use it on our, you know, mobile phone screens and our car vehicle instrument panel, handheld video games, pens, wristwatches. It's basically everywhere. Typographic images generally follow a format of, of four principles, and we'll be studying these principles in upcoming lectures, but they basically you know, rely on the principles of repetition, contrast, proximity, and alignment, as do various elements of design. But in order to effectively use typography with these principles, it's really important that you understand kind of the background of type and you understand the different types of, of fonts, how they're classified, and um, different you know methods of using them for maximum readability. If we look at the written form of languages, it's it's been in constant development for many centuries. If we look back, the scribes in ancient Egypt and the Middle East perfected the craft of writing on papyrus scrolls and clay tablets. Um, Roman makers of books developed written communication into an art, and it basically reached its peak um, of perfection in illuminated manuscripts during the Middle Ages. The invention of the, the, the printing press, as we discussed in the 14th century, and its proliferation and development which were basically courtesy of the Industrial Revolution, they that has continued to fuel the importance and demand for the study of typography. But regardless of era, culture, language, medium, typography has evolved as both a science and an art for one main purpose. Its purpose is to make words easier to understand and more meaningful to read. From the creation of individual letter forms to words, to lines and paragraphs, to pages, to books, typography is manipulation, it's control, it's experimentation of how to use type to express meaning in ideas and letters that attempt to communicate. To be a successful designer, one must be aware of type. Typography determines the mood, the style, and the flow of a piece of work. It is one of the foundations on which design rests upon. Bad use of typography can alter successful design into design that is tacky and amateur. Being aware of other forms within the design can help determine the typeface that's appropriate for that specific design. Typography is also a form of communication, and it's the designer's responsibility to communicate as clearly as possible. 
being aware of different typefaces does not only consist of their physical form and anatomy, but also of the time frame and the reason in which they were created. That can be very important when choosing the appropriate font to use in a specific design.